Hello out there in Twitch land. It is Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and that means it is time for some inspiration. Now our Wednesday night shows focuses on getting inspiration to build a character from a miniature. Sometimes we'll do it on the opposite side of the screen and use a miniature to create a unique and different monster for the DMs to use. Sometimes we uh, have a plan of attack for it, sometimes we don't. Today we're going to be focusing on heroes, so a regular PC character. And we've got our two bags of miniatures here. I thought we would go through and um, just pick a miniature out. This has gotten a couple more added to it just from the uh, a couple of newer Bones Reaper miniatures. So I don't know what exactly I'm going to get, but this one here in a bag is on top. Let's start there. Setup wise, you can see we've got a couple of different cameras. We've got our player's handbook, we've got our dice, we've got our character sheet and a pencil. Now, last time we went and pulled uh, additional source materials so that we could build a character really inspired by the miniature. I'm going to try to keep with player's handbook as much as possible, but there will be times where we will be utilizing additional source material. Let me adjust my mic here a little bit. I hope that uh, picks up the sound really well and does not interfere with anything. All right, so let's see what we've got here for our miniature before we start building a character out. So this figure here looks like uh, robes, got a couple of, I see a bedroll there, a couple of things on the belt, what looks like it could be a dagger there, a bottle, two bottles, one like a wider one and a smaller one, scroll in the hand, a staff with an owl on it. And this figure looks like it's yelling madly. A little bit of a necklace. My guess is this is out of the Greek expansion from the bones because of the sandals and everything, would be my guess. But because we went with the Greek theme last time and went to the Odysseys of Theros, this time I think we are going to stick with the player's handbook. You know, I've been saying for a long time that we haven't had a monk build. And so I'm feeling this could be a pretty good monk. I'm thinking. So we're going to pop this figure right here where we can keep an eye on it. Here in the screen. And I know the lighting on that isn't great. Let's see if I move around a little bit. Can we improve that any? I don't know. Spin this one a little bit. That may help a little bit. All right, so we've got our character sheet. And the first thing that we want to determine is the race and the class. Now, based on the miniature, I am going to go with a human. You notice how many human miniatures there are in this aspect. We've done a lot of humans. Um, next time I'm probably going to try to dig and look for something a little more exotic, maybe a tabaxi or something, uh, because we've done a lot of humans, a few elves and half elves, um, and I think we've done one tiefling. So not a whole lot of variety. And monk, level one. That's what we're going to charge after and go for. So before we get too far, we're going to roll our 4d6. Now I've been doing 4d6, dropping the lowest for generating the stats primarily on this show, just because 
I'm old school and it's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, already it's starting out rough. So let's uh, see where the dice take us. Oh, that one was a two. Not a great monk. Not a great monk, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we get. And just going right down the line here. Oh, look at that now, finally. All right. Well, maybe that's why they're yelling. That charisma of 17. <laughs> Anyhow, let's uh, go through and start getting our stats all built up. We know because we're a human, we're going to add in bonuses to those rolls and spread those out. Let's get into our player's handbook here. And we know these are all going to be a plus one. Uh, we know they're going to be late teens and live less than a century. However, this fellow here does look kind of old. I'm going to move it out of this aspect and up into the camera here a little bit. Um, so it does look a little bit like an older person with the bald head. But we can make that a younger person. Um, so I am going to make them a little younger but not a late teen. So I'm going to say this will be a monk that started a little bit later in life. So we're going to make them actually 25-ish for their age. So we'll say 25 on that age. That way we've got that kind of figured out and match up. Um, let's go with, uh, let's see, a name. I'm going to go just out of the player's handbook with one of the um, we'll go with a Dameron and so let's go with this is going to be uh, Pavel Pavel And let's see, we're going to have our size of medium, of course. Our speed is going to be 30 feet. Let's get into some languages. We've got common and one extra of our choosing. So this one here, I am going to choose elf because that's the second most created characters we've done here. Um, and so just for consistency more than anything else. And now we're going to go into the monk area. Um, let's see, we know our proficiency bonus because we're level one is going to be a two. Um, for our stats, I mean, additionally, we want to have dexterity be the highest, and then wisdom. But our dexterity is 11, so it's not super great. So I'm going to keep them, actually. I'm going to keep them. Let's go with our strength is going to be a 12 total, which will be a plus 1. Dexterity is also going to be a 12 total, so a plus 1. Constitution, a 13, which will give us a plus 1. Intelligence of a 14, so we're at a plus 2. A 16 wisdom, so plus 3. And our charisma of 18, 
which is a plus four. Plus four. All right. Um, so our hit points are going to start at eight plus two because that's our constitution modifier. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, that'll be eight plus one. So we'll start with nine hit points. And we've got a 1d8. And let's see, for our proficiencies, nothing with armor. And then weapons, and we'll do simple weapons. Uh, short swords. And then we get proficiency with one type of artesian tools or one musical instrument. So I'm going to go with alchemical. Um, let's see, saving throws are going to be dexterity and strength. So I'll get to add my proficiency bonus to that. And then we get to choose two skills from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. So we know we need help. We know we need help. We're going to go with, let's go with athletics. Ah, I don't know why I was writing that where I normally do my feats. All right, here we go. Let's go with um, acrobatics. Or, no, I'm sorry, I do want to go with, no, yeah, let's keep acrobatics. Let's keep acrobatics. Um, and then I'm actually going to do insight. Um, all right, so now we get to start with the following equipment. Uh, simple weapon, I'm going to do a staff because the figure is holding a staff, so why not? And then a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's Pack. And I'm going to write that down to the side. I'm going to do an Explorer's. And then 10 darts. All right, now at Martial Arts, which is one of our feats at first level, um, we get to use dexterity instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls of unarmed strikes and monk weapons. You roll a 1d4 and place the normal damage of your unarmed strike or monk weapon. And when you use the attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. So pretty good, pretty good. That's a 1d4. Uh, we also get unarmored defense. Uh, that gives us 10 plus dex plus wisdom. So 10 plus 1 plus 3 for a total armor class of 14. So that's going to be 10 plus dex mod plus wisdom mod. All right, that's really it at first level for a month. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the traditions, um, what kind of path we're going to go on down here. And this figure here, I'm really feeling kind of elemental. I'm thinking more studying earth, air, water, fire. So elementally, I think this figure here, that's why they're holding a scroll. It's more about learning things of the natural order-ish. Um, so that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. Now we need to go to our equipment. And start getting that dialed in. And 
one thing I do want to do is because this figure does have a dagger on the belt rather than a dart, I am going to look at a simple weapon of a dagger. And I'm going to change out those 10 darts for a dagger. Um, if I don't bug my DM too much, I, I believe my DM will let me do that. So I've got a staff and a dagger. And that's a quarter staff. So both simple weapons, I'm proficient with them, uh, really good. So for my staff, on that we're at 1d6 bludgeon. Of course that's versatile, if I use two hands I can use a 1d8. And my attack bonus on that I get to choose either dexterity or strength. So it's not much, a plus one. And then dagger is going to be the same. And that dagger is going to be a 1d4 pierce. And for range, I've got 2060. So pretty simple, pretty simple. There isn't a whole lot to this character yet. Um, it definitely breaks the mold on what a monk is with the lowest scores actually being that strength and dexterity. So as we go through, we've really got to make this character interesting and unique and different and uh, really explain why we're breaking that mold. Um, so then let's go through and do our Explorers pack that we chose. Get that equipment unloaded here. We've got a backpack. Bedroll, which is on the miniature. A mess kit. Uh, we've got a tinderbox, 10 torches, and we've got 10 days ration, and we have got water skin, and 50 feet of hemp and rope. Easy peasy so far, nothing too crazy. Now I want to go into the personality of this character. And we won't need our spell casting sheet, so I can just move that to the side. Actually, I keep it under it just for to help make that lighter. Um, let's go through and just start assigning some of these things. We know based on the uh, type of human that we're doing that we've got a fair skin. We're going to go with, um, let's go with blue eyes, uh, height, we're going to put this character at 5 foot 9 inches, and they look about 170 pounds, and hair, we're going to go with a light brown. Oof, not much to it so far, not much to it so far. All right, let's get into some personality aspects of our character. So that really starts with choosing a good background. And of course, I'm gonna pop my name on there for the player's name, alignment, this character. I haven't decided that yet. I wanna wait just a little bit before I get into that aspect, um, just because I wanna see for the background what, uh, what we come up with. So let's go into our backgrounds and see what fits this little bit older adventuring monk who isn't very strong, isn't overly dexterous, but is very charismatic and wise and pretty smart too. Um, okay, let's jump in and look at what we've got. An acolyte would be at a temple a charlatan, a charlatan. Well, that could be kind of fun for a monk, someone who's uh, play acting. They've got all, always got some type of an angle and a scheme. Uh, criminal hiding, someone who's hiding in the uh, monk orders. 
Uh, they've got some type of a background and they felt this was a good way to escape. That could fit pretty good. Uh, an entertainer, someone who uh, maybe they their parents sent them away, but they're actually a fantastic entertainer and they feel that they don't belong, but they're sticking with it. That could be a lot of fun too. Uh, folk hero, I want to avoid. Uh, Guild artesian, I want to avoid. Thinking also elemental. Elemental is the path that I want to go on. Uh, hermit, no. Noble, no. Sage. Sage could work for that elemental study. Just not feeling it. Sailor. Soldier. Urchin, no. I am really leaning towards charlatan, criminal, or entertainer. Charlatan, criminal, or entertainer. A lot of it would depend on the campaign that I'm going to be playing in as well. Um, hmm. <laughs> I am kind of feeling charlatan, criminal, and entertainer. I'm going to cut out the entertainer to start. So criminal and charlatan. Do we have a criminal who's hiding among the monks or a charlatan, someone who is kind of the same deal, kind of hiding among them and pretending to be something that they're not. I kind of like that angle. And then that kind of destiny piece of they have to, uh, you know, really move into that monk role or find something that better suits them. That could be a fun angle to play. And with this character here, being a little bit older, um, with that big open yelling thing, I can see them kind of spinning some type of a yarn saying, these papers prove that I am something. Something along those lines. I actually like that. Let's go with charlatan. All right, let's see what we got then. That means for our proficiencies, we will get deception. Interesting. And sleight of hand. Good for pilfering. Tool proficiencies, we will also have a disguise kit. And a forgery kit. Uh, equipment, we'll get a fine set of clothes. Uh, we will get a disguise kit. We will get tools of the con of your choice. Let's see what our scheme is going to be first. And then a pouch containing 15 gold pieces. All right, so I cheat at games of chance. I shave coins or forge documents insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weaknesses and secure their fortunes. I put on new identities like clothes or on sleight of hand cons on street corners and I convince people that worthless junk is worth their hard earned money. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I actually like that last one because they're convincing people that they themselves, that Pavel is worth hard-earned money as a monk, even though it isn't, but very good at convincing people. Oof. 
and then for a feature we get a false identity. And here's what I'm going to do. The false identity is Pavel, um, let's say Pavel um, let's go with uh, Yorkston Pavel Yorkston that's actually the false identity and then the real identity is I'm going to go back in to the human and pick a completely different name for who the character really is. Who are they really? And I'm still going to keep them Damarian just because I think that fits really well. So let's go with they are actually Grigor uh, with no surname. I like that. I like that. All right. Um, so that's the scheme. I shouldn't have put that in where the uh, personality trait goes, but that's okay. All right. So for the personality trait, um, let's see. That's a D8 like normal. I'm going to roll for it and see what it comes up with. If it likes it, I'll keep it. If not, we're going to get rid of it. All right. I keep multiple holy symbols on me and invoke whatever deity might come in useful at any given moment. Have you ever seen the mummy? Um, hmm. It's kind of funny and it's kind of... It's kind of funny, but I'm going to skip that one and just see what else there is. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I like this one. I like this one, actually. Flattery is my preferred trick for getting what I want. They are a smooth talker. Ideals. This is a D6. Let's see what the dice say. Creativity. I never run the same con twice. Hmm. I actually am going to choose a different one. I am going to go with Aspiration. Uh, that is, I'm determined to make something of myself. Could be a lot of fun. That's why they're going to stick with Monk and continue exploring that elemental path. All right, a bond. That is also a d6. Let's see what the dice say. A five. A powerful person killed someone I love. Someday soon, I'll have my revenge. Boy, that gets dark pretty quick. I don't want to go down that revenge path, that hunting someone path. Um, <coughs> let's see. Ooh, I like this one, actually. I fleeced the wrong person and must work to ensure that this individual
never crosses paths with me or those I care about. It's not quite as dark. It still has that element that could eventually lead to uh, you know, that confrontation piece, but it's not initially quite as dark. This is someone who um, Grigor cheated somebody who is now after them, and they're hiding in this mon uh, monastery, assuming this monastic lifestyle, just because they're afraid of them. I think that's pretty good because they know they can't fight them, but they can outthink them and fast talk their way into hiding. So that's a cool bond. All right, now flaw is also a 1d6. Let's see what the dice say. Three. I'm convinced that no one could ever fool me the way I fool others. Ooh, that one's actually kind of good. They think they've always got the upper hand when in actuality the um, the monastery, the monastic lifestyle, the other monks are playing him just as much, making sure that he uh, continues to follow the path that that uh, he's chosen. So I'm actually going to keep that one. It gives a lot of meat for the GM to play with. Nice. And just like that, we've got our background character. It's already getting me a lot of ideas on who Pavel Yorkston is. Um, so, yeah, this is actually pretty good stuff to work with. So I'm going to start a backstory here for Grigor. Um, Grigor was... Um, raised on a small farm and discovered they had a, we'll say a silver tongue that they used to shirk chores Um, swindle favors and elicit rewards from neighbors and uh, locals constantly. So that's from a young age Grigor had started this profession of utilizing the silver tongue to uh, get out of work and not have responsibility and get things that he wanted. So kind of entitled and spoiled and um, just rotten, just a rotten kid. Um, so let's see here. Uh, uh, while hustling a A local merchant caravan uh, let's say Grigor bought and sold a worthless idol to a traveling noble who discovered the ruse and has the magistrate hunting the local criminal haunts for Grigor. Uh, 
um, being smart and able to disguise and change his identity. Grigor came up with the persona of, you guessed it, Pavel, and I forgot the last name, Yorkston. A traveler from afar who was invited, and I'm going to put that in parentheses, to study at the will say the um, I want this to be elementally relatable uh, so we'll say the four stones monastery Grigor believes no one would look for him in this environment. So yeah, they're hiding out because of con they played and I think it is super interesting aspect that the GM could utilize this type of a backstory to have the monks in this monastery kind of be able to see through the deception. Though it will be hard because the ability just for deception alone, being proficient with it, having such a crazy high charisma at first level uh, is pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. So let's get these off the charts here. And go through and get a couple more tidbits out of here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, I think we're pretty good with all of our equipment and everything on there. We've got an interesting backstory. Nothing really big of note. And there we have Pavel Yorkston ready to join a campaign. Uh, that really took no time at all. Here I've been a little concerned about being able to cover a monk. I hope I did a monk that people will enjoy. Let's talk about how we are going to paint old Pavel here. Um, so I'm going to do light skin tones to start. Uh, definitely a big mold line that we'll have to clean up, but um, 
and this is wearing almost a toga piece rather than like fine clothes, but you could argue that those are fine clothes. So what I would do is paint this just a really good clean white. Um, so starting with blue whites and then up to pure white, and then actually trim it with blues and gold to give it that more haughty appearance. Um, now I do have the dagger there. I would have that just be normal. That is the pouch where I'm going to say the uh, rations and tinderbox and everything is. Uh, the bedroll, because we're going to have blues and golds in here, I'm going to want to have that be red for a little bit of standout. Now the hair is pretty interesting. It is tight and curled, so we'll do that in a light brown. And then I will probably do a tattoo on the head to give a reason for this person to be younger and have a shaved head. So I want to have a tattoo on that head. And then the symbol here, um, because it isn't a holy symbol or anything, I'm just going to make it look decorative. Uh, the staff we're going to do and actually make it look like wood throughout so it'll look like carved wood. Um, I thought about doing like the top bronze, but I think I'm actually going to do uh, kind of shave this end down here and paint it all as carved wood. I don't know for sure. We'll see when we get into painting it. And then the scroll I am actually going to do just as parchment, but I will probably do some type of a, well, it doesn't really have a seal. He's holding it kind of funky. If he was holding it a little bit differently with a seal on it, it would be cool to have some type of a gold seal on it for his forged documents. But regardless, we can just say that is the forged document that he uses to show that he is actually Pavel Yorkston. Um, Base-wise, it's pretty simple base, uh, pretty stony. Uh, we put little bits of grass and everything in there. Not a whole lot to the miniature, aside from just a lot of little bits and bobs. I mean, there are two like potion bottles. I would actually paint one of those to be a uh, like a leather pouch. I'd probably actually yeah, do this front one like a pouch with the gold and then that back one like a bottle and have something that looks a little more elementally in there. Um, because this is a plastic miniature, we will soak it first in some boiling water. Make sure this staff gets nice and straight. You can see it's got a little bit of a bend both on the top and bottom. But yeah, a pretty interesting monk character. Now, I've played in some campaigns with, uh, I had one player who played an actual monk, um, a fantastic uh, character, great player uh, for Victor, was a, a great opportunity for me to challenge myself on how I can put out good challenges for the character to go overcome and adapt. I also have a one shot that I have that's specifically designed for six to eight players to be 10th level monks and again just a one-shot piece uh, but also very fun and um, entertaining and so I've got a lot of experience from the GM side dealing with monks and um, you know challenging and making sure that I make those monks feel like they are good uh, impacts to the story and that they're not just one hit wonder kind of pieces um, so being able to create a monk, even though I've created some on D&D Beyond just to kind of challenge myself a little bit, I've nev never actually done one uh, from kind of scratch like this. So pretty interesting. The background I thought is pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, definitely something that I would bring into a table if I'm doing something like a uh, Adventures League, something like that. Now the last thing I didn't talk about that normally I start with early on was the alignment. And based on everything we've built so far, I am going to say that this character is going to start out as neutral evil. Neutral evil, which is a rarity for me, an absolute rarity, because I'm very much focused on good campaigns and good story developments. But again, I start alignment. I look at it as starting the game. What are they like? This person is very selfish hiding for themselves, utilizing their fast talk and their disguise and forgery kits to get out of trouble that they put themselves into. So they definitely are going to start neutral evil. And then my goal is hopefully 
that they become chaotic good or neutral good. Uh, one of those two throughout a good campaign. And to hopefully stick with this monastic life that they are delving into really to start out greedily hopefully that they get very altruistic and become this type of character that Pavel presents themselves and Gregor aspires to be. So it's a good opportunity for me to have a good character development, a good character story arc. So that's kind of what I'm going with. Didn't take any time at all. We're going to end up a little bit early on time, but I think that's okay. Let me know if you catch this in the VOD, what you think of it. If you see it on YouTube, make sure to check out our Wednesday night show on Twitch. Links will be down in the description. If you're joining me on Twitch, make sure you hit that follow button and help us grow. We're not looking for subscribers, just people to follow so we can kind of tell the algorithm that we've got good content that we think people should see. Until next time, I hope you have a fantastic evening. And of course, make sure to check our schedule for the shows we have going on. Give us comments and feedback. What do you like? What do you not like? What would you like to see us change, adapt, or present? We're here for the community, so any way we can help is definitely going to be a boon for us and hopefully enjoyable for you. Until next time, have a great evening and let us know where will your adventures take you. Bye-bye.